Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out the all new AMD Ryzen 5 8600G APU. And with the recent release of these new APUs with integrated RDNA 3 graphics, I've been super excited. Recently on the channel, we took a look at the Ryzen 7 8700G. I also did a video building a small form factor PC around that new APU. If you're interested in checking those out, I'll leave links down below. And when it comes to the 8700G, it's a great performer, but retail price on that is $329. With the new Ryzen 5 8600G, retail is $229. Now we do have less cores, less CUs on that new iGPU, but I was really interested to see how this thing performs. With the 8600G, we're getting 6 Zen 4 cores and 12 threads, and when it comes to the new iGPU, it's still based on RDNA 3, but this has 8 compute units instead of 12 and its bigger brother, the 8700G, and it's clocked a bit lower. With this, we also get a smaller cooler. This is coming with the Wraith Stealth instead of the Wraith Spire with its bigger brother, but with the lower core count and lower core clocks, I think the Stealth is going to be perfect for the 8600G. Now again, retail price on this is $229. It's actually coming in $100 cheaper than the 8700G, but we've got some cut down specs here because with this, we get six Zen 4 cores and 12 threads, base clock of 4.3 gigahertz with a boost up to five gigahertz. The iGPU is an AMD Radeon 760M with eight compute units. It's based on RDNA 3 and it does clock up to 2800 megahertz in this 8600G. This supports DDR5 RAM, 5200 megahertz plus, and AMD does recommend at least 6000 to 64 to kind of get the best performance. And since we're using a new AMD 8000 series, we do have that AMD Ryzen AI built in with up to 16 tops of AI performance. When it comes to the testing rig I'll be using for this video, it's the same exact one that I used with the 8700G. I wanted to keep everything fair, so everything will be exactly the same. Gigabyte Aorus X670E Elite Motherboard using a 1TB Kingston Fury M.2 NVMe SSD. And when it comes to the cooler, I went with this 280mm Frost Flow from ID Cooling. I've actually had really good luck with their AIO, and it's already installed here, so I figured we'd just go ahead and set it up with the 8600G also. 700 watt thermal take power supply and of course we need some RAM here and RAM speed is going to be really important with these APUs. I'm going with Viper's new RGB Venom RAM. This is CL36 and it does clock up to 7400 megahertz but I've clocked it down to 72 because that's what I tested with the 8700G running in dual channel here and again it is CL36. We've got 32 gigs. So now I just need to make sure everything boots up, make sure all of my drivers are up to date. And of course, you don't need to build this big with an APU. This is just my test rig. I will have another video coming up very soon on the channel doing a small form factor build with the Ryzen 5 8600G. It's actually much cheaper than the one we did with the 8700G. But if you want to see that one, link for that is down below. All right, so here we are. We're going to be testing on Windows 11 Pro. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 5 8600G. Uh, six cores, 12 threads. When it comes to this RAM, it is CL36 running at 7200 mega transfers per second. Got 32 gigs here. And of course, we've got the Radeon 760MI GPU. The very first thing I wanted to check out here was just the total TDP on this chip out of the box. Uh, to do this, I've got core temp because it's really easy to see the power here. This is CPU package power. If I just run a stress test with CPU-Z maxing out all six of those cores, you can see this jumps up to around 50 watts. We're at 4.8, 4.7 on the CPU, but that's not all of it because we do need to add a load to the iGPU. So I've got GPU-Z, just start a render test, around 87 watts. And that's what the 8700G is running at stock, but there's still more that we can actually get out of this because right now, We've got all six cores maxed out and the GPU, but as you see over here, our GPU is not running at 2800 megahertz. So there are ways around this and it's really an extreme use case scenario. I just wanna see what it would take to get those clocks up on the CPU and the GPU at the same time. So now with a little bit of tweaking, we're gonna stress that CPU out again, right there at 50. But once we put a load on this GPU, you'll see it jump up a bit more we're at around 90 watts. We've got the CPU right there at around 4.8 gigahertz. And we've also got the iGPU at 2800 megahertz. So, I mean, we're maxed out here with this chip on the CPU and the iGPU. Anywhere from 90 to 95 watts. 
Now remember, games aren't going to max out all six cores and 12 threads plus that GPU at the same time. I just really like running that test to see exactly what this thing can pull. And it's quite high for a chip like this, but we've also got to factor in that iGPU. It actually pulls quite a bit of power. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were a few benchmarks. And first up, we've got Geekbench 6 with the 8600G single core 2487, multi 12441. And just to give you an idea, on the 8700G, single core is coming in at 2,625, multi 14,312. Of course, it's going to be a bit higher. We've got higher base clocks and more cores there, so it makes sense. But we're really not that far off with the 8600G. Moving over to some iGPU benchmarks using 3 d Mark. Here's Night Raid. On the 8600G, 27,843. On the 8700G, 31,172. And remember, our RAM is running at 7,200 mega transfers per second. It's also CL36. So with Night Raid, that 8700G is beating out the 8600G by about 11.2%. 3D Mark Firestrike, 8600G coming in with the 7,648. 8700G with the same setup was the highest score that I've seen out of an iGPU in Firestrike, 9,018 making that 8700G with the 780M about 16.4% faster than the 8600G. And finally, we've got Time Spy here. Again, the 8700G is beating it out with a total score of 3,862, giving us around a 13% increase using that 8700G. But these are synthetic benchmarks, and now I want to move over to some real-world gaming. When it comes to the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I actually thought that both of these chips would do much better than they did. Now, they are playable at 1080p low, but when it comes to the 8600G, we got an average of 57 FPS, and on the 8700G, we got an average of 65. Now, either way you look at it, it's not bad for an iGPU, but given the age of the game and given that we're at low settings, I figured we'd be much higher on both of these. Next on the list, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, and on both of these new chips, it's actually some pretty impressive performance. Medium settings, we're at 1080p, and instead of using FSR with this, I like using the built-in upscaling method, IGTI, set to balanced. On the 8600G, very playable performance. Uh, even on the ground, we're over 70 FPS here. By the end of this run, on the 8600G, we had an average of 73 FPS, which is really impressive for integrated graphics. And on the 8700G, we had an average of 78 FPS. So it's really not that far off, but it could definitely make a big difference in harder to run games down the road. Here's PAL World, 1080p, low settings. And unfortunately, at the time of making this video, without any mods, we don't have access to FSR. That's really going to help out on these new APUs. By the end of this, on the 8600G, we had an average of 53 FPS. On the 8700G, we had an average of 58 FPS. I always like to throw at least one fighting game in, so here's Mortal Kombat 1, 1080p, low settings, with FSR set to balanced. With these fighting games and these iGPUs, I've had really good luck. On the older 5000 series APUs, going down to 900p really helps out, but we can definitely do these at 1080 now on the 8600G or even the 8700G. 1080p, medium settings, and FSR is set to auto. That's how it kind of defaults with all of these APUs, and I mean, over 40 FPS, not too bad here, but we can get a lot more out of this by taking the settings down, and even on this 8600G, going down to low settings with FSR set to performance, we're seeing averages over 60 FPS on the 8600G. Now, I know we did have to take those settings down to low, but it's still a really playable game like this. It doesn't look absolutely horrible because we're still at 1080p, of course, we are using a little bit of scaling there with FSR, but it can definitely get you by. I'm actually really impressed with what this 8600G is doing so far. I gotta say, the 8600G's 760M iGPU is really keeping up with the 780M and the 8700G. I mean, it really depends on the game. We've seen anywhere from an 8% increase on the 8700G up to a 20% increase depending on the game. 
But going into all of this, I really thought that that 8700G was going to leave this one right in the dust. But this thing is keeping up really, really well. I'm very surprised. And at a $100 lower price tag out of the box, I think this would be a really great choice. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video at the Ryzen 5 8600G. I will have more videos coming up with these new APUs. We definitely need to get some emulation testing out of the way on both of these. But I think the next one I've got coming up would be a small form factor built using the 8600G. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you hit the like button and think about subscribing so you know when to post the next one. But if you want to learn a little more about these new APUs or maybe pick one up, links for those will be down below. And if there's anything else you want to see running on these new chips, let me know in the comments. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.